The doctor is in and the topic today is non-smokers and lung cancer. It's more common than you might think. And the risk factors are something that everyone should know about. And joining us today to talk about lung cancer and non-smokers is Dr. Scott Ackerman. He is one of the First Coast's leading oncologists. He joins us every week to give us a breakdown of various topics. And so the topic this week, when you think of lung cancer, you automatically think, well, they must have been a smoker. But that is not necessarily the case. That's correct, Casey. You know, we always associate tobacco and lung cancer. Uh, but there's lots of people who develop lung cancer that aren't smokers. So first of all, tobacco is the leading cause of lung cancer. It's also related to a lot to other cancers as well. Bladder cancer is very highly related to, as well as some others, but, to, but and throat cancer and tongue cancer, those sort of things. But uh, with lung cancer, tobacco use we, goes, goes way back to that, uh, that connection. And about 87% of all lung cancers are directly related to uh, tobacco use. So if you do the math, and there's about 180, 185,000 newly diagnosed lung cancer cases a year in the United States. So if you look at the 87% of those are related to tobacco use, that leaves about 24,000 cases a year, a lot, a big number, uh, who are non-smokers who die of, of lung cancer um, every year. So that leads to the next question, and that is, what are the risk factors then for lung cancer? Well, tobacco. Yeah, tobacco, would be tobacco, the tobacco, number tobacco, number one. one, number two, and number three. Okay, <laughs> all right. Eighty-seven percent, right okay. there. Um, and the second leading, uh, in all seriousness, the second leading cause of of, uh, of of lung cancer is secondhand smoke. So not direct tobacco use, but just the inhalation of secondhand smoke. And the interesting thing about that, this is people who are maybe the wife or husband of a of a smoker, so the house has smoke in it. But smokers. Because they smoke a lot, they develop a thick respiratory uh, uh, layer of mucus in their, in their bronchial tree. And that has a bit of a protective effect because it keeps the carcinogens a little farther away from the, from the, the, bron the, the bronchus and the, and the lung tissue. But a non-smoker doesn't have that thick bronchial, doesn't have those thick bronchial secretions. So when a non-smoker inhales secondhand smoke, he or she has more damage from that smoke than a smoker would really? because of that lack of protection because a smoker you know, gets this protection because his or her lungs are chronically and constantly being uh, irritated and getting infections and things like that. So secondhand smoke is, is, is a lot more important than one might think because people who, who inhale secondhand smoke have lungs that haven't been exposed to uh, you know, long-term tobacco use. Anyway, getting beyond cigarettes sure. and tobacco. There's other risk uh, factors, radon gas. We know about the fact that there could be radon gas in your house, and I'll show you a little bit later about radon gas a little bit more. And also work-related exposures. Luckily, uh, there's not a lot less of that than there has been in the past. Here in Jacksonville, we used to have a big shipbuilding industry, yeah. and, and uh, a lot of asbestos was used there, so asbestos is a, is a, is a big issue, is very much related to tobacco, uh, to, I'm sorry, to lung cancer, as is arsenic. Okay. We see a lot less of that. Air pollution. Uh, thank goodness here in Jackson we don't have air we don't have that much air pollution, but air pollution um, is a is a big factor associated with lung cancer and some viruses. Some of the same viruses that we associate with cervical cancer and with cancer of the throat can also um, uh, put one at increased risk for lung cancer. Is there a screening process then to get tested for lung cancer? Well, you'd think that there would be. You'd think that it's easy to get a chest X-ray. We just do chest X-rays on everybody, like we do mammograms, okay. and find these, you know, and find these these lung cancers here. But uh, you have to. Uh, it's hard to pick up lung cancers early on a chest x-ray. So the scientists tried CAT scans to see if CAT scans would diagnose cancers early enough. And the truth is there has not been any study yet that has shown unequivocally that that study will, will, will lead to increased uh, uh, death rate from lung cancer. So my guidance to people that ask me this is that uh, uh, talk to your doctor. If you're at high risk for lung cancer um, because you're a, you have a family history of it or if you have um, uh, if you're a heavy smoker, talk to your, your physician about getting a chest x-ray periodically or a CAT scan periodically. But we don't have anything like the mammogram for breast cancer. We don't, nothing, nothing has panned out. So I guess then it would be important to know what kind of warning signs and symptoms that you need to be on the lookout for. And, and, but I know that we have talked before, like when we talk about colon cancer, there aren't a lot of warning signs. Uh, and so it's it's kind of one of those things that you have to do the screening. But since you don't have the screening for this, right? What, what what should we be? What should we have on the top of our minds? Well, prevention, is right? The we, we, and the smoking but is just really. The, I mean, I, people need to understand just how important that is. The smoking. If you're smoking, stop now. Right. Um, so the early signs of lung cancer, 
Um, there are no early signs if it's, if it's caught very early, but if it's only in the chest, a lot of patients present, uh, present I me, mean, that's what the first symptom is, that could be a persistent cough, a cough, a nagging cough that just doesn't go away, that you hadn't had before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, chest pain, if the tumor gets a little bit bigger, you have some wheezing, you could hear you know, the, the air going, going across the tumor. You can cough up blood, sometimes the tumors will bleed and a patient coughs up blood. So certainly if someone coughs up blood, the first thing we do is get a chest x-ray or a CAT scan to make sure it's not lung cancer. And if God forbid the cancer spreads to, to another part of the body, uh, like with other cancers, there's symptoms associated with that spread of the cancer. So if it spreads to the bones, it typically goes to the bones of the back, um, you know, have back pain, or if it spreads to the brain, certain kinds of lung cancer have a very high propensity to spread to the brain. And uh, we see many patients where their first sign or symptom of lung cancer is a seizure or weakness of their, of their arm because of a tumor that spread from the lung cancer um, to the brain. So if you notice anything, that you should just be super cautious and go get it checked out, any sign or symptom. Anything new. Anything anything new. Okay, so uh, how do we then prevent it? I mean, I know we're going to say not to smoke. I mean, that's right. the number one thing. Also avoid secondhand uh, smoke. And okay. there's been a lot of things that, uh, there's been a lot of, uh, of governmental things over the years that have helped us to avoid secondhand smoke. We have uh, the Florida Clean Indoor Air Act, which uh, we don't have uh, secondhand smoke exposure in restaurants anymore. No one's smoking in airplanes anymore. Um, also, you can avoid environmental carcinogens, the radon gas uh, we ta talked about earlier. So certain houses in certain parts of the country have a, have a, are, are susceptible to radon gas because in the soil is this radon gas. Here's a map of it here now. The red areas are areas that have lots of radon in the soil, in the ground, and the yellow areas are less. And so what you see here in Jacksonville, yeah. we're pretty low, but it looks like out by Lake City, there might be a little bit higher uh, uh, risk. So you can get that measured because radon gas would put one at an increased risk uh, for lung cancer. You can get a little kit and you leave it in your house for a week and yeah. then you send it in the mail. Yeah, just better to know, to be aware of these things and that way you can do something to prevent it. Dr. Yep. Ackerman, thank, you, thank you so much as always for being here. We appreciate it for sponsoring this segment. And Dr. Ackerman is with us every Friday and next week we're going to be talking about healthy microbes and bacteria in your body. And for questions regarding today's topic or any other health questions that you might have, you can visit firstcoastoncology.com. Once you get there, confidentially submit your questions, whatever they may be, cancer or otherwise, to Ask the Doctor.